memory management, execution and loading of user programs. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the concept of execution and loading of user programs. Introduction to Memory Management, Execution and Loading of User Programs A user program is a programming code that defines a specific action to be executed to perform a specific task. Each instruction of a user program is an explanation of a specific task to be carried out. In the Linux kernels, the execution of user programs is triggered by the EXCC system call. This EXCC call commands the kernel to run a new program within the current process, and it overwrites the current execution context of the process, with the context of the new program. The first job of the EXCC system call is to verify whether the calling process has permission rights to the file being executed or not. After verification, the kernel invokes a loader routine to run the program. The loader does not load the contents of the program file into physical memory, but it sets up the mapping of the program into virtual memory. In Linux, no single routine is followed to load a new program. The Linux system maintains a table of loader functions, and gives the opportunity to each function to try loading the given file when an EXCC system call is called. In this lesson, Let's discuss the procedure for loading and mapping the user program in memory in detail. Mapping of program into memory. In Linux, the binary loader does not load a complete binary file into physical memory. Instead of that, the pages of the binary file are mapped into the regions of virtual memory. When the program tries to access a page and if there is a page fault, only then it uses demand paging to load that page into physical memory. Linux generally uses the ELF format loader. An ELF format binary file consists of a header that is trailed by page aligned sections. The ELF loader reads the header and maps the sections of the file into separate regions of virtual memory. The image shown on the screen is the typical layout of memory regions set up by the ELF loader. The memory region set up by the ELF loader puts a kernel virtual memory region at the beginning of the layout. It is inaccessible to normal user mode programs. The rest of the virtual memory is available to applications which can use the kernel's memory mapping functions. The job of the loader is to set up the initial memory mapping, which allows the execution of the program to start. The regions that need to be initialized include the stack and the program's text and data regions. The stack is created at the top of the user mode virtual memory, it grows downward towards lower numbered addresses. It contains copies of the arguments as well as environment variables given to the program in the EXCC system call. At the bottom end of the virtual memory, other regions are created. Then it maps runtime data, writable initialized data as well as program text. Next, any uninitialized data are mapped in as private demand zero regions. It also has a variable sized region that programs can expand as needed. Each process has a pointer, BRK, that points to the data region and processes can extend or contract their BRK region with a single system call SBRK. Once these mappings have been set up, the loader initializes the process's program counter register with the starting point recorded in the ELF header, and the process can be scheduled. There are two types of linking of a program into memory, they are static linking and dynamic linking. Static and Dynamic Linking Now, let's start with static linking. Once the program has been loaded, and has started running, all the necessary contents of the binary file are loaded, into the process's virtual address space. However, most programs also need to run functions from the system libraries, and these library functions must also be loaded. In the simple case, the needed library functions are implanted directly in the program's executable binary file. Such a program is statically linked to its libraries and executed, as soon as they are loaded. 
The main disadvantage of static linking is that every program contains copies of the same system library functions. So, it is important to load the system libraries into memory only once in terms of both physical memory and disk space. Dynamic linking allows it to happen. Linux implements dynamic linking through a special linker library in user mode. Each and every dynamically linked program holds a small, statically linked function. That function is called when the program starts. This static function maps the link library into memory and runs the code. The link library defines the libraries required by the program and the names of the variables and functions needed from those libraries by reading the information contained in sections of the ELF file. Then it maps the libraries into the virtual memory. It doesn't matter where these shared libraries are mapped because they are compiled into position-independent code that is PIC, which can run at any address in the memory. Hence dynamic linking is better than static linking. We have reached the end of our discussion about the execution and loading of user programs. Conclusion Thus, from this lesson, we can conclude that the execution of user programs in Linux is the process by which a computer executes the instructions of a program by loading it into the memory, and execution is triggered by a call to the EXEC system call. Summary From this lesson, you have learned that In Linux, no single routine is followed to load a new program. The Linux system maintains a table of loader functions, and gives the opportunity to each function to try loading the given file when an EXEC system call is called. In Linux, the binary loader does not load a complete binary file into physical memory. Rather, the pages of the binary file are mapped into regions of virtual memory. The job of the loader is to set up the initial memory mapping, which allows the execution of the program to start. Once the program has been loaded and has started running, all the necessary contents of the binary file are loaded into the process's virtual address space. In static linking, every program contains copies of the same system library functions. And the dynamic linker links the shared library with the executable program when it is executed.